Spring Bulk Day 32 Biceps and Back. Boys, we are starting off with single arm dumbbell preacher curls, okay? This has got to be one of my favorite exercises to do for biceps. Personally, I think it's one of the most effective because there's no stretch you get like during a preacher curl. The only thing that could come close is if you got your arm behind your body like in an incline curl, except you oriented yourself to allow for the highest tension to be at the bottom of the range of motion like in a preacher curl. So like maybe if I laid on a bench, you know, kind of like how you do for a dumbbell pullover and did curls that way, but that'd be a little weird. Anyway, you guys get what I'm saying. The stretch is crazy. No matter how you do it, it's going to be a pretty crazy stretch. And obviously we're going really heavy here. The form isn't 100%, but I'd say it's probably about 90%, okay? I'm still trying to pause at the bottom. I think I'm achieving that pretty well. I'm getting a very rambunctious uh, stretch like I talked about. I could go a little bit deeper, but I don't see... I don't, I don't know. I don't see much of a need for that. But anyway, boys, the purpose of this channel is to document my bodybuilding journey and uh, show you guys kind of how I am in the gym. You know, my training style, what I do... Uh, all kind of different methods of how I'm getting to where I'm getting. And, uh, yeah. So, I'm about to talk in the video in a minute. I don't know how to stall to make this seem not awkward, so I'm just going to fill the sound waves for a couple more seconds. And... You're like a punching bag for me. Huh? All right. <laughs> I'm a punching bag. That's not nice. That's all you bodybuilders are good for. You're just a bunch of meat. All you're good for is a piece of a slap of meat. <laughs> nice. All right, so I'm about to mog the frick out of my dad. Just stand behind him and hit a lat spread, a rambunctious front relaxed. You know what I'm saying? So uh, anyway, though, my brother is a boxer, and that's probably why you see him shadow boxing all the time. Well, no, that's definitely why you see him shadow boxing all the time. The dude is actually pretty good. He constantly trains. Uh, he trains other people. But, you know, he won't admit that he's good. You know, it's that type of ty type of deal. You know what I'm saying? He's humble. He's freaking, he's really good. He does tons of cardio and all that. You know, all that pencil neck stuff to try to stay small. But you know me. I always skip my cardio. No, I'm just kidding. I mean, I don't do cardio on the bulk if I'm being totally real with you guys. Just because I uh, I just don't feel like it. Now, this is the honest truth. Would it be beneficial? I don't know. Probably to an extent it would help me gain weight slower, gain a more favorable ratio of muscle to fat. But at the end of the day, man, I, I really like doing cardio when I'm cutting because it feels like I'm working towards something. But doing cardio when I'm bulking feels kind of like I'm swimming you know, against the current if you know what I'm saying. So I actually skipped forearms this workout and uh, I don't regret it at all because my shoulder felt a little iffy. My right shoulder felt iffy coming in. And then also later in the workout, I tweaked my left shoulder doing some stupid heavy lat pull downs. But yeah, I mean, wrist curls are pretty hard on your joints if you go stupid heavy. I, I, you know, I always like to wrap the 90 on the wrist curl. I actually have pretty good form too, which is surprising. Uh, all the way down, all the way up. I tried kind of a partial range of motion last week, and it was all right. I mean, it was definitely less impactful on the joints, but I felt like the pump wasn't as good, believe it or not, because I wasn't getting a super full stretch or super full contraction. I was just hanging out in the mid-range, so... It is what it is. The heaviest wrist curl I ever worked up to was 105 pounds. And I did it, I believe, for two reps each arm. Two nice, high-quality reps. And that was difficult, man. That was really freaking difficult. But, it, I, need, I mean, it worked. I have a bunch of stretch marks on my freaking forearms just from trying to get a better, stronger wrist curl. Uh, you know, doing hammer curls heavy. That's going to get your forearms pretty big, too. Targeting your... Brachioradialis now, is it the most efficient way to target your brachioradialis? No, definitely not. I think the best way to, if I'm being a total nerd, would be like a, 
imagine if I sat backwards on this, you know, bench. Like, if my body was towards you guys and my elbow was off the other side. And if I did a reverse curl, so a pronated curl, where the hardest part would not be in the lengthened position like this preacher curler is seeing, but the hardest part would actually be in the contracted position where the brachioradialis has the best leverage. That would be the most ideal scenario for a brachioradialis growth-inducing environment. You see my, my freaking brother here just bullying me for no reason. I'm so used to it. You guys can tell. He, he always just, you know, treats me like a freaking meat bag, you know, just punching, just shadow boxing all over the place. But, I mean, I don't even flinch at this point. I don't even flinch. I'm just used to it. It's like, who gets scared of a pencil neck, really, you know? But uh, I'm just... He's going to watch this and he's going to, I don't know, it'll, it'll be funny to see his reaction. Anyway, though, um, dude, I think in this part right now, I'm talking about measuring my arms, I believe. And boys, during this freaking workout, I hit 17 inches on the left arm pumped, okay, with a bicep pump. Now, keep in mind, my right arm used to be bigger. And now it's slightly smaller in my measurements that I take. Maybe I did, maybe I'm doing it wrong. Maybe, maybe like my shoulder's out of position or something. But I don't know, dude. I'm just, I'm just saying. I mean, <sighs> I freaking, <sighs> excuse me, I'm yawning. I'm getting tired. Um, uh, uh, sorry guys, I just lost my train of thought. Not gonna lie. Uh, because I'm just getting tired. Oh, yeah. I've been starting every workout with my left arm and every single lift that I can that I, you know, do single arm stuff with. And as a result, my left arm is now slightly, slightly surpassed my right unless I measured wrong. So I'm going to try measuring again next time I get a tricep pump and uh, see if it's at 17 and a half on the left. Hopefully it would, it would be similar on the right. But that'd be pretty cool, dude. I mean, I want to get 18-inch arms during this bulk. I'm going to go to try to get past that. If I can, which I believe I can, then I will. And so I guess that means I will. But, you know, the ultimate goal, right, as a natural, I would say 20-inch arms. That, that would be insane. And I think I can get that in my lifetime. I can't imagine not being able to put on, you know, almost three more inches from here. Well, I guess... Technically, if I'm if I'm saying an unpumped 20 inch measurement, that would be crazy. Uh, can I do it? Yeah, absolutely, I can do it. The growth rate on my arms is already just extremely rapid. I mean, of course, whenever your arms are depleted, the measurement is not nearly as impressive. But you know, whenever you're pumped, when you're carved up, when you're full, when you're bulking. <sighs> Oh, that measurement likes to go up, up, and up. So, 20-inch arms are definitely in the future. Now, here's the thing. If you want to have an ambitious goal like 20-inch arms, you got to, not only you have to give it your all, but you have to really believe that it can happen. You can't just, I mean, like Tom Platt says, bro, you can't just do a few of these and a few of those and, you know, have some protein and then call it a day. You know, you have to progressively overload and keep track of all your progress. You have to eat correctly. You have to do arm-biased training specifically, which I think is one of those things that's significantly overlooked. If you want any muscle group to improve, you have to bias it to the highest degree in your training if you want it to improve to the best of your ability, right? I don't just say, oh man, my calves are small and then do nothing about it. I know my calves are small, so I need to work on them. What do I do to work on them? I put them first in every leg day. I make sure I do the maximum effective volume. I make sure to take my sets to failure. I make sure to get a really, really nasty stretch and stay in that bottom half range of motion where the calves seem to grow the best. And, you know, obviously, like I mentioned a bit ago, you just progressively overload and as long as the weight's under control and everything and you're and you're really focusing on all those factors I just mentioned, 
you know, you could turn a weak point into a strong point very easily. Okay, maybe not very easily, but <laughs> it'll happen. If you the, the more you put in, the more you get out, right? So that doesn't necessarily mean throwing a crap ton of volume at an exercise or, you know, just being goofy and being like, oh, if I just eat more, I'll get more muscle. But, you know, being smart about it will yield long-term results. You know, I don't know if you guys noticed, but I got some cool stretch marks in my lats that have been coming out. And, uh, you know, they were there on the last bulk, uh, but now they're really making themselves prevalent, man. So we are getting ready for my top set of what is now my favorite freaking lat exercise. The pump was absolutely gnarly from this. And uh, we wrapped four plates on this low handle T-bar freaking chest supported row. I think I got it for four reps, if I believe correctly. But you guys can see, my gosh, the, I mean, the lat thickness is out the wazoo, out of this world these days. And I would credit that to appropriately carving up and moving heavy weight. Boys, I low-key just realized I have a protein shake sitting next to me that I just kind of forgot to drink. So I got to drink that in a minute. But, dude, we dropped the weight here. Something I never thought I was capable of doing. I mean, man, the ego has been getting to me on these lately. But three and a half plates. I, You know, normally I would never touch this weight on a T-bar row. But uh, the pump was... 15 times better just going lighter. Max, is that you? Bro, you look just like me. I Max, why are you doing that, bro? That looks that looks silly. You stick to your side, I'll stick to mine. Okay. Apparently that's how I sound. All right, so on this set, you guys can notice a tangible difference in not only the form control, but the pump at this point. This is, like I said, this is the most pumped my lats and back have ever been by far. Now, does the pump matter a ton in your training? I would say yes and no. I think if you're not getting any pump whatsoever, then that's a sign you're doing something wrong. But honestly, man, it's pretty rare that you just don't get a pump. I've pretty much never heard of somebody who tries to train a target muscle group intensely and doesn't get a pump. Anyway, boys, speaking of lat pump, I mean, at this point, my lats were extremely pumped already, but little did I know it was about to be even more insane of a stretch and contraction that I just was not prepared for. And even though uh, you guys are about to see some, you know, ego lifting, not going to lie, uh, it was not intentional. I, I gotta, I gotta just say, I knew the weight was gonna be heavy, but I did not think I wasn't even gonna be able to get it past my chin. So, yeah, I mean that's partially why I hurt my shoulder, man. The weight was super heavy, but you see my family here, my freaking brother and my dad are just going at it hardcore. They are getting a nice, good full range of motion with some lighter weight, and that's probably what I ought to start doing. But you know, in the meantime, I'm still on my extremely heavy weight, potentially ego lifting kick. So that's what I'm enjoying lately, and it's what I'm seeing a lot of benefit from. So I'm just going to stick with it for now. But you guys can see I'm exhibiting slight change in the freaking T-bar rows. I mean, lightening up the weight from last time, N knowing how much better it feels, you know. Uh, it's going to be hard not to implement that in more areas of my training. And, you know, now that I think about it, uh, just watching these lap pulldowns, I feel like my sticking point has always been that bottom half range. I wonder if it's because I lean back when I do it a little bit. I don't know. Who freaking knows? Maybe it's just because I'm ego lifting. Who knows? All right, boys. We're over on the spinal erector machine now. This is, I guess, called the lower back machine, but obviously it's going to get your spinal erectors entirely, and it's going to develop thick pillar-like columns. Hey, you back. So, if there's any tip I have for this machine, at least for me, as a five foot eight male, grab the handles further back. Okay, there should be handles like a leg extension, right? When you grab onto those handles, there's the same exact handles on this machine, but grab very far back on the handles, kind of behind your body. I figured that out a little bit late today, but 
uh, once I figured it out, the, uh, the lift just went smoother and it didn't really feel like I had to stabilize and generate force where there wasn't on, if that makes sense. And I feel like especially at the, uh, last half of that range of motion where I'm in, you know, almost fully contracted, I guess even I'd say the, the last, uh, like the mid range, I guess the mid range up into the contracted position is really hard to get through. But if you grab onto those handles and stabilize yourself, it makes it much easier, but not in a bad way, in a good way. It just it can produce force way more efficiently. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I feel like the main reason I do this is because it helps my back just feel really good. Like, it just makes it feel looser, and it gets blood flow to my spine in general. I mean, maybe maybe... It's just super bro science talking, but I mean, it just feels really nice on my back, especially if I have any sort of low back pain, it kind of just, you know, eliminates it. So here, like I said, I was not grabbing the handles in the right spot or really grabbing them much at all because I was still just figuring out the right setup. But I think now, honestly, this is going to become a new staple movement because, you know, I was enjoying it for a while, uh, even with the unstabilized sloppy ish form but now i'm like you know what I, I get a crazy stretch a crazy contraction you know obviously not in this clip you're seeing right now but definitely worth adding in and <sighs> keeping in i'm freaking tired boys so uh you know, I'm also a little bit unsatisfied watching this clip because I'm kind of wondering, hey, when's the form going <laughs> to, when, when, when am I going to grab onto the handles and learn the right way? But before I can do that, my brother hops on it like a beast and, uh, you know, Andrew Tate's back at it again on the lower back machine, repping it out like it's nothing. Half the stack like a boss. The dude's literally shadow boxing a little bit there mid set. I know you guys saw that. He's just so habitual with it. And then I had to mog him real quick a second ago. You guys saw that little front relax. But, yeah, I mean, he just kind of goes with the flow, man. He doesn't really try to overcomplicate it. He just has fun on all the machines. He goes real hard, you know. And finally here you can see I figured it out. Hands are very far back on those handles that I was talking about. And I don't know how, but it just feels like I'm balanced correctly. You know what I mean? So... It just, I just very, I don't know. I wish you guys could experience the nice stretch and contraction that I'm feeling here. Because I feel like nobody ever does full range spinal erector work, you know. And there's definitely some value in it. I don't know what happened there. Jeez. And uh, on this set, I don't know if you guys can notice already. But another thing that changed is I'm gripping even further back. Because it feels even better somehow. But... Obviously, there's probably a point of diminishing returns on that, but I think I've found my sweet spot behind the actual handles themselves onto the bar that connects to the seat. That feels really nice to grab onto. And uh, you guys can see me just whipping my back backwards. Pretty nice. By the way, I hope you guys like the fit today. It was like kind of just a blue theme. I don't have like blue shoes or anything, but I, there's, I have blue elements to my white shoes. So I was like, you know what? Let me just do that. That'll work. Oh, uh, what am I doing here? Controlling the eccentric, milking the eccentric. I like it. Some partials at the end. All right, boys, this is a different angle today that we're working with, but it's a good angle. And, uh, yeah, boys, this is the craziest lap pump I've ever had. It is a little bit faded just because we just did some erector work to end off the workout, but... This is gonna be a crazy pump check, probably my craziest yet. Oh, I like that front relax. Thank <laughs> you. 
Oof. Okay, we're out, boys. All right, boys, so we've been home for quite a while at this point. I finished my last meal of the day, and right now I'm just freaking getting ready for bed. As you guys can tell, I'm tired. And, uh, yeah, dude, that was probably one of the greatest posing sessions we've had. I figured out a lot of unique things, a lot of cool things, but the one thing I got to work on is flexing the muscle into the place it's supposed to be, right? Flowing is important and looking right and making sure, you know, you're going to all the right places and your posing is good. Uh, but I'd say the one of the more important things to do is to flex the muscle into place. So, like, instead of just bending my wrist right now, I could flex it like this. I guess that's a bad example because it doesn't. you don't see much of a difference when I'm flexing versus when I'm just moving it. But you guys know what I'm saying. Like, I could have my bicep like this right and just move it or i could flex it you know what i mean so that's another aspect of posing you have to work on another aspect is waist control waist control is something huge that i need to work on and i know i need to work on it and part of it i'd say probably the biggest part of it is just cardio like you will not need to breathe super deep oh god excuse me i did not excuse me i did not mean to flip the camera but um yeah Anyway, hope you guys have a good one, and I will see you guys tomorrow for leg day.